they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frown. But I still gotta love somebody. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Frenchie, and you are tuned in to Talk of the Town. Today, I got a very, very special guest, the one and only K-Goddess. K-Motherfucking Goddess, we in the building. Grrr, bow. bow. Brooklyn bitch, anyhow. Anyhow, how you feeling today? You good? I'm feeling good. Okay, I'm high, so excited. You say you're from Brooklyn, right? Yep. What part of Brooklyn? Brownsville. Brownsville, the Ville to be exact. Yes. So, who did you grow up listening to? I grew up listening to Biggie. I grew up listening to Roxy and Shantae, mm -hmm. The Temptations. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up listening to everything, okay. any and everything. Like, I was just a music fiend. Okay, that's dope. Uh, when did you fall in love with music? I fell in love with music. I was really, really young. Like, my mother used to try to beat my ass because she um, used to be mad that when I was trying to do my homework, I'd be watching 106 in Park. Oh, really? So, yeah, I was one of those kids. I was really young. Shout out to 106 in Park. Right? Yes. How did you get into music? Um, you know, I have people in my family that was into music. Um, I guess I really don't know how I got into music, I guess, because I just put my mind to it and I started mm -hmm. doing it. And I just started meeting people that know people that know people. And I just kept going. And now I'm in the industry. So it was like a line. It was just meant to be. Type yeah, it just, it just went. Like anything that I always put my mind to, I made sure that I did my research. And I made sure I would connect with the right people. Mm -hmm. So um, probably like in the beginning of my career, people used to come to me and be like, yo, you in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm in the industry. Yeah. Oh, shit, I'm in the yeah. industry. So it's shocking, yeah, right? it, mm -hmm, it just All happened. Right. So how did the pandemic affect your music, or did it? Um, the pandemic made my music better. It made my music better. It made my music greater. Um, I found my sound in the pandemic. Um, but my personal life, it fucked everything up. Really? But, yeah. Uh, like, relationship? Um, or? Nah, not relationship, even though that shit over with. Um, but not relationship-wise. Um, I feel like we had problems way before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, but like family wise, um, friendship wise, you know, things like that in my personal life. I felt life. like that was with a lot of people too. Cause yeah. they forced people to be together. Yeah. Yeah. Real shit. Yeah. Um, what did it make you notice about yourself? Um, it made me notice that I'm real strong. Mm -hmm. It made me notice that, um, I have more patience now. It made me notice what I actually wanted and how I wanted to execute my goals. Yeah. So it definitely helped with um, planning and making sure that um, I make sure that my future is set up the correct way. Got you. How did you know rapping was something that you really wanted to do? Um, shit. Sometimes I still don't even know rapping is. Nah, let me stop. I'm about to, <laughs> let me I'm stop. About to say, girl. Let me stop. Oh. Um, I knew rapping was something I wanted to do once um, once the fans really started like liking me, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, there was a lot of hate. Um, nobody liked me at all. But once New York really started being behind me, yeah. that's when I really was like, all right, we outside. Yeah, once the home team fucked yeah. with you, that's it. Yeah. So how would you describe your music? My sound is authentic. My sound is different. Um, I was the first female to ever bring drill to New York. Mm -hmm. Um, so my sound is the reason for these bitches' sound. Yeah. <laughs> I you know, that yeah. shit. Heard <laughs> so what's your creative process? Like, how do you get to the, to the work? Like, um, My creative process is different. You know, sometimes I legit rap in my sleep. So I have a notebook, like, on the side of my pillow. I wake up and I jot down things. Um, sometimes I go in the studio and I go off the head. Like, I got a home studio now in the Bronx. And um, Rest in Peace Shooter, that's his old studio. And for some reason, I'm just, it's so easy for me to go, to, go off the head in that studio. Um, sometimes I go off the head. Sometimes um, I got to listen to different type of beats. Sometimes the beats put me in the mood. Um, so it just, it depends. You know, sometimes I need weak. All the time I need weed. Mm -hmm. Some, <laughs> sometimes I need liquor. You know, it depends. But when I'm angry, mm -hmm. it's it's like, I don't know, I be zoned out. When mm -hmm. I'm angry, I, I could just go for hours. Like, oh, I had a 10-hour studio session the other day, and I was just going for hours because I was going through a lot, and I was really angry. So it depends on how I'm feeling. What's the thing you enjoy most about being a rapper? Um... I guess I guess the fans. I guess I guess it would be the fans because um my fans keep me motivated, they keep me going. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a lot of things in this industry that makes you fall out of love with your craft. 
um, because a lot of the times, like, people see, um, they see us outside. Like, I've been at Rolling Loud, BT Awards. I've been so many places this year that people see me and they think it's all cool and dandy. They think it's all peaches and cream. They think it's so easy to get into these events. They think I'm so just accepted by everybody. But it's hard. It's a lot that um, you have to deal with in this industry, and it's a lot on your mental health. Yeah. So, um a lot in this industry make me unhappy, but I would say um, my fans keep me going, they keep me motivated, and then my struggle and my pain that I go through day to day keeps me happy. That's so. really dope. So keeps you said motivated. that sometimes things are not all dandy. Mm -hmm. What's something that you don't like? Like the thing that you um, hate the most? I hate when people that surround me mm -hmm. act like they don't know how I move. Mm -hmm. That's that's I hate that the most. Like um, when we outside, I hate when. Um, somebody around me or somebody on my team uh, a move a certain type of way and I gotta fuck is you doing yeah, like, check them. yeah that's about it that's that's about it but other than that um I could say little to nothing get me mad in this game now because yeah. um I done been through so many like up and down emotions yeah. in this game to where I don't have time for people to take me out of character no more I don't have time to um to show the expression on my face no more and things yeah. like that so a lot of shit don't bother me I just it's whatever. Skin now. Yeah, so much. it's it. more so like um, I already know I'm gonna get past this, and we gotta move forward. So, what's yeah. the solution? You know, I don't really pay attention to problems no more. So you know, they always saying that females have ghost riders and things like mm -hmm. that. How do you feel about that, ghost riders? Um, I feel like if a female rapper that's out there want a ghost rider, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? I charge, <laughs> I charge like you know what I'm saying. My price is really good, and I write for a couple people in the industry right now. So you know, you could just hit me up. We could keep it discreet. Okay. We could get a little contract or whatever. But if you need help, I will help you, girl. But besides that, um. I really feel like it depends on the individual. I feel like if you a female rapper and you going so hard, like, oh, these bitches don't write their shit, then mamas, why well, I found out you got a writer. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's a lot of them. Yeah, it's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So, and then if if you a female artist and you're not really a rapper, because there's a difference between a female artist and a rapper. Yes. If you are artist, um... I feel like you more in a creative space. You more in a creative mm -hmm. zone. You don't mind having a writer or writers. Yeah. So I don't really see nothing wrong with it, especially um, the fact that I'm getting deeper into the industry now. And um, like a lot of labels, they offer me reference tracks, like hooks and things like that. Really? Yeah, that's what goes on in Behind the industry the a lot. Scenes, yeah, yeah a, a lot, like more than usually you will, um, you'll notice. Um, but I feel like as a rapper, you just have to know where you stand at with it. Like me, um, I would probably fake accept a hook, but I'm not accepting no verses. Like I write, you know what I'm saying? So you could give me a hook. You could give me a direction to go in if you yes. want me to go in a direction. But um, I don't accept writers. Um, I could probably accept a creative directing team and we could all sit down. If I don't know how to word something, it's like, yo, this is what I want to talk about. Yeah. I'm cool with that or whatever because that's what goes on a lot in the industry. But as far as like females getting their shit written for them, I don't know. I just feel like, what are you in this game for? Like, it's no originality no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people rapping about shit that they never even did in their life. Mm -hmm. And that's what bothers me a little bit. Um, but besides that, you know, if you carry yourself very very good and things like that, I won't bother you about not writing yeah, your yeah, shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't, it don't really bother me. But what bothers me is these bitches that got these writers and they trying to steal my flow and my swag. That's what bothers me. Yeah, I heard that. Ugh. Don't be stealing shit. Don't. They going to mm -hmm. keep doing it. But it's all right because I'm the trendsetter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me it. <laughs> City girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the hardest thing about being an independent artist? Um, the hardest thing about being an independent artist is that um, people going to always try to take credit for what you do. Mm. And you have to notice that, um, you know, because in the beginning of my career... I wasn't, like, really fonder of, like, having a team and things yeah. like that. Now, I'm so far in my career, I need a team now because I need help. And um, I would just say that at first, I wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with setting certain things up and doing certain things and then people taking up a credit for it, you know. And now, um, I would say that when you have a team, you know, it's a us thing, it's a y'all thing, it's not just a you thing. Yes. So, I would say that was, that was my hardest thing I dealt with, really. Got you. Any labels been approaching you? Yeah, labels been approaching me since the beginning of my career. Um, I turned down a lot of situations. Um, but lately, I don't know. I've been thinking about taking a situation. Yeah, so, because I don't it know. helps you, you know? It definitely helps you, but um, I'm more of a businesswoman. I'm not just a yes man. You know, that's another thing. A lot of these yeah. female rappers are yes men, and they puppets, and they do anything that the industry tell them to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm real stern, and I'm real, like, stuck up. And... Um, 
I'm real on a business side. Yeah. Like, I'm real business savvy, and I'd rather learn from certain things. And, like, my lawyer, mm-hmm. I make sure my lawyer teaches me everything. Like, That's you know, true. don't belittle me, teach me. Yeah. And um, so I just want to make sure the paperwork is Gucci, or I want to make sure I could come to some type of partnership with somebody yeah. rather than me just signing. No 360. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm good on that because um, I do everything. I release my own music. I figure out what song I'm going to release. I direct my own videos. Like, I'm, I really do a lot behind my career. So if I'm signing to a label, that means I'm giving a label the yes, the okay to tell me when to drop, how to drop, and I'm using a distributor. So yeah. it's like, I don't know. I'm kind of nervous That's about so that. That's too much control. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of control. So I'm nervous about it. But, you know, I've been thinking about it because I do need help. Yeah. It'll come when you, yeah. when you feel it. It'll you come feel it. right later. Mm-hmm. What's the biggest misconception about you? Um, The biggest misconception about me, I would say is that I'm mean, really? but I am mean. <laughs> <laughs> You mean nice? <laughs> like, n- I mean. For real? I can't see it. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to see it, y'all. She said, yeah, girl. No. I'm, like, I'm, I'm. Right. All right. You I would say. Shit, maybe that's what it is. I would say believe of have of what you hear. Like, mm-hmm. if you hear K Goddess beat a bitch up. Believe that, but believe the fact that it was a reason that I beat the bitch up. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just my fault. You know, so a lot of people think it shit just be my fault and it don't. I just be defending myself. But, yeah, I would say um, me being mean because I'm a sweetheart. Um, I got a good heart. You know what I'm saying? But we all fighting solid demons. And um, I'm very stern. Like, I'm very, like, if I was a nigga, they would call me that nigga. But I'm a female, (laughs) so I'm that bitch. So. Got That's you. me, yeah. As a a woman in a man's based environment, how mm-hmm. do you make your presence be felt? Um, I'm very I'm very loud. Mm-hmm. That's number one. I'm very loud. Even if I'm not talking, my appearance is very loud. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I, I I mean, I'm like I mean, like I don't I don't allow the men in this industry to play with me, mm-hmm. and um. If somebody feel like they have more control over me, I'm playing chess. Mm-hmm. That's that's all. In this industry, with being a woman in this industry, you just got to play chess. Got and you, you got to know to win. Got you. So, do you mix business with pleasure? I used to. Um, but I'm good on that. I don't mix business with pleasure no more because um, it, it fucked me up. Because I'm too loyal. Mm-hmm. When I mix business with pleasure, I'm way too loyal. Um, if a dude try to look at me some type of way or try to flirt with me, I'm putting them in a place. Like, I'm way too loyal. So, I'm good on business with pleasure. I don't want no more rappers or producers. And it's probably hard being in the studio all the time or with people. You run into that a lot. Like, niggas be yeah. trying it. They try a lot. But you know what? I'm so used to niggas trying to fuck me that... Mm-hmm. I just got like a whole lineup of excuses in my mind. I got you. Like, <laughs> I just know the go to excuses. Know what you're yeah, I just know the go to. Like, I don't know. Certain niggas' swag, appearance, the way they are, it's like, okay, use this line, girl. You know, this always get you out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I so, get you. I don't pay no mind. Uh, that's funny. How do you feel about female rap at the moment? Um, female rap at the moment, I'm very proud of female rap at the moment. Um, we taking over this shit to the point to where we intimidate a lot of niggas. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, we intimidate them a lot, especially because it's so many females right now that are writing their own shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so men are very intimidated. Um, but I'm proud of where we came and how much we growing, and I'm proud to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't mention female rap in New York without mentioning K Goddess. So I'm proud to be on that lineup because I worked really hard to have that stamp. That's dope. Mm-hmm. How do you, well, what do you say to the critics that say females always talk about pussy, sex, and blah, blah, blah? You a hypocrite mm-hmm. because these guys is always talking about pussy mm-hmm. and sex and shooting niggas and drinking lean and mm-hmm. like you a hypocrite. So if a female want to rap about her pussy first off, I better hear in the streets that that pussy good. Don't be rapping about a pussy and you don't got a wolves. <laughs> but besides that, man, we don't pay these niggas no mind. They they always they gonna come at women no matter what. Yeah. A woman could not have a vagina. They say we rap about our titties too much. You know they always got excuses. So Definitely, fuck them. Right. Do you feel that the men, well, the females are equal to the men? Um, I feel like the females are greater than the men in this mm-hmm. industry because um, even before females was fair front and rap, because, you know, back in the days, they, they would pick and choose which female would come to the fair front. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of women is behind these closed doors. A lot of women are sitting at the top of yeah. these labels and these executive seats, and people really don't know that. It'd be a lot of women calling these shots. So, um, 
yeah, I would say that they they mad. We we outside. Oh, um, what's one of your greatest fears you had to overcome to be where you at today? Um, my greatest fear I had to overcome to be where I'm at today, I would say, is um being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm. Um, I had to learn that a lot. Like it's a lot of situations to where um. Like, cause I have real bad anxiety. Like growing up in Brownsville, um, I was I was in a lot of a lot of shit. Yes. So um, I feel like certain things is triggers to me. Yes. So before I go outside, like I pray. Um, you know, I keep I make sure I'm very well protected. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it just a lot of stuff give me anxiety. But you know, I be like, I pray. I'm picking say my prayer. Like God, if if today is the day you taking me out. At least let me finish my song. <laughs> you know, let me gain these fans real God quick. Forbid. God forbid. But you know what I'm saying? I have, like, real bad anxiety. So I would say, um, you know, this 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 job is you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, definitely. So. What does success mean to you? Mm, what success means to me? Mm-hmm. Success means moving my grandmother out of Brownsville Projects. Gotcha. Um, success means making sure my brother and sister don't got a need for nothing. Um, making sure I set up a foundation for my kids and my grandkids and making sure I break generational curses. That's true. That sounds dope. As mm-hmm. I like the generational curses thing. Yeah, That's we got to break dope. those. Real shit. So what's one of the biggest accomplishments that you've done achieved? Because I know you done did a lot. Okay. But what's one of them? Like? I would say one of the biggest accomplishments I achieved was I winning a competition to perform on Hot 97 Summer Jam. Yeah, that was so, fucking I see yeah. your blue outfit. You look sexy. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I was like, look at her. <laughs> The rain fucked it up, but you still. Yeah, it still, fucked it up. My hair was smelling real um, flat ironish oh, I that hate day. That shit. It was uh, horrible. I hate that. It was horrible. So I was just about to ask you about the summer jam performance. Were you nervous? Um, I didn't get a chance to perform because of the hurricane, yeah. so that fucked it up. But I still got on stage with Fabio. You know, of course, Fabio wasn't gonna do me like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, was I nervous? Nah, I wasn't nervous. When I was on stage with Fabio, like, if you look back at the footage, I had my phone out a lot. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I was nervous. I just, I felt like I looked stupid. Mm. That's the way that I felt. Because I felt like um, I worked so hard to um, accomplish certain goals. And I worked so hard to make sure K Goddess name wasn't in certain boxes. Yeah. And that was my, I felt like that was my opportunity or that was my chance to for people to see, like, this girl's next. Oh. And that opportunity was taken away from me. So, um, like, I just felt stupid. Like, the whole time I was at Summer Jam, I wasn't even going to go to Summer Jam. And the whole time I was at Summer Jam, like, my, my team had to carry tissue with them because I kept crying. Like, I just kept randomly crying. Yeah, yeah, my heart was broken. My heart was broken. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, my heart was broken. Well, we tough year. now, though. We yeah, back yeah. outside now. But, yeah, my feelings was hurt. Damn. So, yeah. All right. Who's your top five? Um, Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive. Mm-hmm. Currently. currently, top five. She currently. currently, it gotta be in New York. Yeah, yeah. Unsigned or signed? Oh God. New York girl. New York. All right, my Period. top five. Hmm. Sleepy Hollow, cause I love me some Sleepy. So Sleepy Hollow, Sleepy Hollow at me, but Sleepy Hollow. Um. <laughs> all I'm saying is I'm just trying to be in 2055 with you. Like that's all I'm saying. Like. But I sleepy, I was like, hey, sleepy hollow, um, Fabio, mm-hmm. Pop Smoke. Mm-hmm. Oh no, gotta be currently. All right, sleepy hollow. We can still throw pop in there. All right, pop smoke, pop smoke, pop smoke. Live pop. long live pop, pop smoke, um, K Goddess, mm-hmm. and let me hear a female. I'm yeah, sorry, I'm thinking of a female. Yeah. I'm thinking of a female. Um, Young Devin. I Young Devin. Her. Young no Devin. Funny shit. Young Devin. Did you collab with her? Yeah. Me, me and Devin, we got our own personal relationship. So, Young Devin. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So, who would you like to collab with? Um, Who would I like to collab with? I would like to collab with... Hmm. I would like to collab with... It's always like that when you get put on the spot. Like yeah. Yeah. Because, you know what, I'm thinking of mad names right now, but you got to pay attention. I got to think of the future reference, just in case one of these bitches try to come for me or something. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't going to throw them names out there. You know, but it's all love. This clip, like, you know, yeah, you bitch, you were showing me love. Yeah, you wanted yeah. a feature with me, like, you know what I'm saying? So we're going well, we to keep it calm. Like that. Let's nah, but that's how these bitches think, though. That's how they move. So we right. very transparent. So I'm going to just say, Sleepy Hollow. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> sleepy. 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 We could take a nap I together. Okay. Like, all I'm saying is, I'll be sleepy, sleepy. All right. You know what I'm so, saying? Um, I see that you said Tony Yayo had managed you at one point, mm-hmm. right? Uh, did he ever think about getting you along the lines with 50 or anything like that, like signing over there? Um, I met Tony Ayo through 50. Okay. Um, you know, 50 knew me since I was a little girl. Um, so I met Tony Ayo through 50. Um, no, it never was. I never thought about that. You know what I'm saying? Because Jayo was so genuine. Like, Yayo was the one that told me. Because he calls me Kate the Goddess. Mm. So he was the one that told me, like, yo, you need to rap. Like, you need to go, you got the balls, you got the look, you got everything, you need to go, you need to rap. And he was the first person, I would say, that actually gave me that motivation a little bit. Um, so, and me and Yayo never had paperwork together. So, yeah, so I wasn't even signed to Yayo, but my loyalty was to Yayo, because that's just how I am. So, um, it was never, like, nothing like that, but Yayo always showed me love, 50 always showed me love. Um, yeah, it's genuine over there. Okay, so I seen in interviews you said that you're bisexual? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what's the best relationship with a man or a woman? See, I never been in a relationship with a woman. Really? No, I just eat pussy. Okay. But so you don't get your pussy eaten from a woman? Yeah, they eat my pussy. Alright, so who eat the best? Hmm. Hmm. I would think a woman. Huh? I don't know. I don't think I had that much head from a woman to even <laughs> determine that. I'ma see. I'ma I'ma take a rain check on that. I'ma okay. see, cause you know I got this nigga that gives some good head. Like he legit is valid. Like. Gotta give him something. I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna go get head from a nigga, and I'm gonna go get head from a girl, and, and then I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. So I seen that um, Ruby Rose had posted something like the uh, signs, uh-huh. and then was you coming at her when she had Rose? You um, had Rose? I just said like bitches just wanna be anything these days, cause she was throwing out folk, then she was throwing down folk, then she was throwing up folk. Like bitches wanna be anything these days, cause she was throwing out folk, then she was throwing down folk, then she was throwing up blood, and then she was throwing down blood, and then she was saying some shit about Crips. Mm-hmm. So it's just like. I don't know. Maybe she's just fucking a new nigga right now, like, and he's yeah, folk. Yeah, and she, she, yeah. Along. You know, cause girls do that. I get it. You yeah, know, no. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I my was nigga messing. This. I'm yeah, yeah. I was messing with a little blood before. I ain't gonna mm-hmm. lie. I used to wear red panties and shit. So I understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get it. You know what I'm saying? I understand. But shorty mamas, like you doing a lot. You like, you know what I'm saying? It was, it, it was, it was a lot that she playing a GD anthem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just and a lot. She, she was like that style language. That's what she said. Yeah, she then she started doing sign language. I'm kind of impressed that she knows sign language, Me though. Me, too. I, she did that. She said she learned it in church. I'm like, girl, shout out to you and God. You going to find... She going to turn around and she going to be a preacher next. Something. She going to fuck Something. on a preacher and want to be a fucking... Um, what's the what's the, what's the the ladies that wear white with the white Crocs and shit like that? I don't know. The ushers? The, the ushers? Yeah, she going to want to be a part of that yeah, next. Yeah, she in church She like going to be throwing up the, the halo. Oh, Next, no. yeah, she's so, wowing. What about this beef with designer? You still got beef with him? <laughs> See, the funny thing is, I actually didn't have beef with designer. I just threw him in the ditch track because I had problems with his bitch. Mm. Um, but um, it's all love on designer. He um, you know, he had that some good head. That shit was fire, by the way. That shit was fire. Thank like, you. It was definitely dope. Thank like, you. <laughs> oh no. Thank you. All right. <laughs> she didn't beat me. <laughs> no, because no, I'm thinking about the next question. What you say? Run it back. <laughs> Run it back. You say he ate your pussy because you love getting some tizzy top. Yeah, he was. Um, he I know was y'all right. was fucking with each other at one point. Yeah, we was. I ain't gonna lie. Me and Designer was. See, I got a relationship with all my niggas. Okay. And me and designer was really vibing, like you know, we was um, like we was really vibing. Like I used to go to his crib. Like it was a good friendship. Whatever the fuck it was, it was really good. Like I didn't have no beef with him. Like mm-hmm. legit. Like. Designer, if you're watching this, you know I still got love for you. Um, especially since I heard you single now. I definitely got love for you. Um, but it was no beef with him. It was all love with him. I genuinely have respect for him because I genuinely know him. Yes. And, um, you know, his girlfriend was out of place. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I just felt like, Designer, me and you have a personal relationship. Like, you used to travel out the country and bring me back gifts type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not on no, like. Not on no crazy shit, but little cute shit. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, if he had a show somewhere, he'd bring me back, like, a little he gift. He was feeling the kid. You know what I'm saying? We was genuinely vibing. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, I said, I have a relationship with every dude I ever dealt with. It yes. wasn't no, I just got fucked and that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, I genuinely had a relationship with him. So, I felt like when his ex-girlfriend, because she was in the industry basically trying to 
blackball me and basically try to tell people don't work with me so i felt like as a black woman you know how hard it is in this industry for other black women so as a man and you actually had a relationship with me actually had a bond with me and you didn't tell your bitch yes. like yo you wilding like chill like put you bugging something i don't even you don't even necessarily have to put her in her place yeah. because a lot of niggas don't do it but something you yeah. know what i'm saying it just it was so reckless that I just had to throw him in there. So I threw him in there. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm not going to apologize for it because the balls was fire. You, yes, it was. The balls was crazy. It was fucking it was, fire. It was crazy. But I will say... Um, shout out to designer. Shout out to designer. Because I'm not going to apologize. <laughs> but you shout out. What you said. Yeah, you but shout out to you. And it's no beef with designer. Okay. No beef. So um, I seen you said you was working on a cookbook. Yes. What's the name of that? I'm going to call it Goddess Eats. Goddess Eats. Okay. Ooh, you really cook like that? Yes. I chef it up. Girl, I just made some ribs and some lamb chops. I'm fiending to go home Girl, and kill it up. you always knew how to cook or just... Not always. I ain't going to lie. Because when I was in college, mm-hmm. I gave a few people high cholesterol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you got to learn through the yes. mistakes. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So now, um, mm-hmm. I'm a beast. My grandmother taught me how to cook. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my food is good. I'm going to cook for y'all one day. Sure. I'm gonna cook for y'all. Sure. I'm gonna cook for I'm y'all. I'm hungry right now. So. Damn, I got you, girl. I wish I would have known. Any <laughs> other things besides the cookbook, like and music that you're working on? Um, I'm working on so much. Um, me and my team, we working on a dating show. Cause you know what I'm saying. Um, my vibrator, I don't like charging it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need some Disney for a long time. Um, so we working on a dating show. Um, I'm gonna be on shows. I'm gonna be on TV this upcoming winter. Um, and I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to keep my name relevant. I feel like I've been doing good, you yes, know, for the past four years, especially being independent and only solely working with me and my team. I feel like I've been doing really, really good. But mm-hmm. it's time to up it. It's time to um, make better decisions. Yes. It's time to make sure K okay, Goddess is everywhere. Um, so yeah, that's just the goal right now. Um, what about a new tape? No new music, anything like that? Um, I'm gonna be dropping singles, but a tape. I don't know, cause 2020 I dropped three EPs. Um, my unreleased music, I have about 200 unreleased songs. And every day I'm, I'm recording new stuff because I'm going through new things. Um, but a tape, I don't know, I might drop a tape for my birthday. I've been thinking about it a little bit. But my main goal, you know, like my goal is not to, to drop tapes no more because I feel like I proved the fact that I could rap now. Because um, a lot of people were trying to like sleep on me, like, oh, that bitch can't rap. And now that I've improved the fact that I can rap, I feel like I don't have nothing to prove no more. Mm-hmm. I just feel like now I'm telling my story more on my music, and now it's to um, grab the listeners' ears and to build the business on business. You know what I'm saying? Now it's about the relationships. It's about networking. It's about traveling. It's about getting on these shows, these mm-hmm. concerts, and um, making sure that K Goddess is more of a marketable, marketable brand yep. than just the artist. A so, yeah, like that. that's what I'm focusing on right oh, now so the last question i'm gonna ask you is samantha dealing with anybody right now Samantha, let me tell you something. I ain't gonna lie. Samantha be um she be feeding for some male attention. Like she really do. I ain't gonna lie, girl. Like I've been test running niggas and for real though, I like I ain't gonna lie. I, I probably I probably had two niggas that I was feeling mm-hmm. and I invited one nigga over one night. Mm-hmm. He spent the night, mm-hmm. he blew minds. Wow. Like I don't know, niggas just be turning me off. So I don't know, I think Samantha fake broke. Like no, it's these niggas. It's bro. Yeah, it's just it's annoying, girl. Like I don't know, like. No, so Samantha been um, Samantha ain't get she she ain't get no 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 yummy yummy time in like a few months. I feel sad. Mm, yeah, me too. She crying right now. Oh, it be like that. Oh, you hear? Girl, I hear you. We, we both crying. She My crying. crying too. We both crying. Girl. If you find somebody, ask him if he got a brother, I, and or, then I ask him. Or sister. Brother, or sister. Or sister. Facts. I got you. I Facts. got you. So, mm-hmm. Samantha. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, K-Goddess. I appreciate you so much for coming on Talk of the Town. Of course. And what you really saying, Brooklyn bitch anyhow? I'm a Brooklyn bitch anyhow. Fuck your red bottles because I'm from New York where we storm bitches out on our Timberlands. Grr, bow. You heard that. Talk Facts. of the Town. Thank you, K. Grr. Appreciate you.